we got ourselves a brand new 2025 ford expedition and i have a question why is a lot of big suvs starting to look like gmc's we have the c-shape headlights in the new nissan armada for example we also have it here in the ford expedition but that's not to say that it looks bad it's just an interesting observation that c-shape headlights or daytime run lights is definitely something that is a trend right now so they have a brand new ford expedition tremor for 2025 which is the one i would personally get with the 33 inch tires uh, you got 24 inch wheels on the uh, platinum you got a 24 inch display as well in every single new uh, uh, expedition so what we're going to do here let's have a look at this these two articles one for the overall expedition and then one for the tremor and then i'm going to jump into photoshop show you the front side rear the interior of both the platinum and compare it to what's different for the tremor and the reasons why i would pick the tremor so first of all 2025 ford expedition gets more exciting with extensive updates adds a 24 inch dash displays and offers innovative options as well as expanded blue cruise capability Along with the new front end and rear ends, the Expedition gains a split folding lift gate and off-road oriented tremor trim also joins the lineup. Now the Expedition's new look here is highlighted by a front end with a more cohesive design. The daytime run lights uh, create a winged motif that makes it look even wider than before. I've said this before, when you have a big light bar in the front end that stretches all the way to the end points of the front, it just makes it look more uh more wide and also more stately in this case because there's very a lot of horizontal vertical lines in this design and there is an illuminated bar below the grille that connects the distinctive front lighting the taillights now have vertical elements and the taillights as well both on the armada and the new expedition they just i thought this was a new gmc when i when it when i first saw this car both in the front and in the rear the taillight design looks very much like the gmc yukon for example and the Suburban with the ability to automatically open when, when approached with the key fob. We we're talking about the uh, rear lift gate here. Uh, it's split into an upper and a lower section, similar to the setup on the new Lincoln Navigators. And this can also be enhanced to the rear section with a newly available cargo tailgate manager that stores under the cargo floor and can be used as a seat back or a second level shelf. The 25 Expedition can again be optioned with four zone exterior lighting, which I think it's a great idea from Ford to have this uh, zone lighting that they have in the F-150 as well. Uh, great for dimly lit campsite, for example. So you can just uh, turn those on and you can see what's going on around you. These roof mounted lights can also be individually controlled via, via the new uh, center touchscreen. The regular Expedition still has a 122.5 inch wheelbase and then you can option for the longer Max which has a 131.5 inches between the axes meaning that it is essentially a house on wheels. A familiar twin turbo 3.5 liter V6 and 10 speed automatic transmission feed the rear or all four wheels. This is a car that you I personally you want to have this as an all-wheel drive for sure four-wheel drive the engine standard tune pumps up 400 horsepower 480 pound feet of torque and then you have the high output v6 requires higher octane pre octane premium fuel that ups the power to 440 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque ford says that the max towing ca capacity rises from 9300 to 9600 pounds now looking at this interior what do we have we have a lot of screens, obviously, this being a 2025 model year. So previously, the full-size SUV offered, uh, was offered with a 12.4-inch digital gauge cluster and a vertically-oriented touchscreen measuring 15.5 inches. But 15.5 inches and 12.4 inches are rookie numbers in 2025. That's all been replaced by a new 24-inch unit that sits on top of the dash in this sort of carved out portion behind the main dash. It looks very interesting. And on top of that, it's uh, we got a new steering wheel that has been sawed off to uh, not hinder the visibility to the screen itself. It has this sort of squarish shape to it. A fabric trimmed upper section that hides the sound systems speakers looks very cool that is this little shelf that we have up top and in the middle we, we oh, not only do we have a 24 inch uh, gauge cluster here we also have a 13.2 inch touch screen wireless carplay android auto are still standard the new expedition also offers offers a power sliding center console that moves back eight inches to reveal a cubby in the back most rows there are newly available 40 20 40 split 
uh, bench that opens up to accommodate lengthy items such as skis or if you have any sort of lumber. The base model will start at $63,695. That is the only price that we have so far. And this new expedition is uh, scheduled to reach dealerships next spring. Let's quickly have a look at the what, what is the difference here? With the new uh, trim, uh, with the new trim level, that is the um, Tremor, replaces the Timberline that I made a review on. I really like that big SUV. So 2025 Ford Expedition adds off-road focused Tremor for the first time. And the difference is here is you know, this is the reason why I would pick this trim level. I, I think if you gotta have a big SUV like this, you want to have it be as off-road capable as possible. At least in my opinion. Uh, otherwise, what's the point of having this big uh, ground clearance? So you have uh, so it features LED lights in the grill that we don't have on the Platinum and the other trims here. A front bash plate from the F-150 Raptor. And you also have 33-inch all-terrain tires on 18-inch wheels. I just think it looks very cool. So the underbelly is protected by skid plates that covers its transfer case and fuel tank. And we talked about the skid plate in the front uh, and heavy-duty chin guard, similar to the one we have on the Raptor. They also tuned the suspension here and the steering to be a little bit more accommodating for uh, off-road uh, settings. The new rubber is mounted on 18-inch wheels. And you, of course, this being a Tremor, you do have this or orange pocket that we have in in one of the one of the wheel spokes itself, you also have a, a lot of orange painted tow hooks with a bright color also popping in the uh, area surrounding the front fog lights. A pair of sturdy side steps come with the Tremor as well, making it easy to go in and out of this car. And the ride height height. This is also a big reason for choosing the Tremor, in my opinion. You got um, a high. It sits higher than than the rest of the lineup at 10.6 inches of ground clearance with that said let's jump in to photoshop here and let's have a look at this new beautiful stately looking ford expedition for 2025 on the left side we do have the platinum on the right side we have the brand new ford expedition tremor uh, trim level i do like this design but as i said when i first saw this i mean check check out the the graphics in the front end this c shape is like they took it straight from a GMC. I would be pretty mad if I was GMC and seeing all these car companies, Nissan and now Ford, copying the the front end, the the eyeball, the face of the GMC, and just splashing it onto their own cars. But it's a pretty cool integration here with the graphics. This is why I love bigger SUVs now because we still have this classic uh, uh, layout when we have a w one single line up top and underneath here is where all the graphics starts and in this case we also have a separation with a bumper here which is very unusual to see today beautiful intakes on the side and you can see just how static this is horizontal line horizontal line vertical line another horizontal line and of course this line up top coming in to the vertical lines for the uh, taillights and the DRLs we have the headlights themselves sitting within the grill so it's sort of a pattern if we take these patterns here and just copy paste them and then we splash them over here and just put a light inside of it and that's how you get the headlight units for the new expedition that is i don't think maybe hyundai did something similar with the tucson and the santa cruz that we have but i do think those were just daytime run lights and not the main headlights in the grill of those cars i really like this front end i think it's a beautiful looking design definitely has a stately feel to it i'm also not opposed to the light bar that we have in the front even though it's a big trend right now but in this case i feel like this light bar it frames the top half graphics very nicely and creates an even stronger a defining separation between the lower section and the top half section here lower section being the intake the bumper and in the uh, uh, tremor package the skid plates and stuff like that so beautiful design for the front end of the new expedition looking at the side view here and this is where this suburban feel comes in to me uh, for me we have a nice beautiful line flow here i wish it has a little bit more of a connection to what's going on in the graphics maybe connected to the corners but now it just goes straight into the side right here of the taillight which is totally fine i mean it's not a big deal there's also a small little upswing here of the graphics of the bodywork in the uh, in, in the very rear end and this is the max here this is the longest wheelbase you can get you can see the uh, tremor on this side is the regular wheelbase overall the proportions here looks very nice and very stately but this again just has a lot of chevy 
suburban GMC feel to it overall but it's very hard to differentiate these big SUVs because you want to maximize interior space and obviously what that is going to do is going to create a very boxy design which I'm not against at all because as I said I just think it looks uh, stately when you have designs like this we also have a line down here to carve out some of these volumes I like that this line at the bottom has a connection to what's going on back here in the bumper as well and this platinum is rolling on absolutely massive 24 inch wheels they don't look massive in this case because the car itself as I said is essentially a house you can camp in here you can live in here just add a a, a starlink uh, plate up here you have internet and then you can do whatever you want in here just add a sofa a couch bed on the other side remove the passenger front um, a seat uh, add a desk in there and you definitely can fit whatever you want in this big max edition of the new expedition looking at the rear end here i'm gonna sound like a broken record but look at the taillight here does this not remind you of both the outline right here the 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 framing for it and the interior pieces doesn't this look like a gmc yukon to you to me it definitely does or maybe we can even say it also looks like a nissan armada here the one detail that i don't think suits the expedition in the rear end are these pieces here i'm not sure what these if these are actually LEDs, uh, like uh, daytime run lights in the back, or if they just are reflector lights, but they look out of place. I, ju I, I just want to remove these and not have them at all because they clash a lot with the taillights. They have no connection at all whatsoever to the taillights. It feels like Ford said, everybody's doing light bars these days. We need to have some sort of bar in the middle just goes from one end to the other so let's just splash a couple of graphic features on here and let's make it sort of a, a, a an attempt in in making a light bar but i do like the uh, the uh, framing for it because this framing has a similar connection to the framing that we have going on in the front end drls and the front and top graphics as you can see here that this is a max further down low we don't have any exhaust pipe sticking out here you can see one exhaust pipe down here i wish exhaust pipes uh, came back and just showed them off a little bit more now looking at the interior here 13 point i do believe four or six uh, infotainment screen in the middle and a big 24 inch gauge cluster up top it's absolutely massive looks like this screen is duplicated onto the infotainment screen so i'm not entirely sure uh why they would do that as a press photo because that just shows that one is redundant maybe or you could have some other function on one of these screens to just show, show the different functionalities of the screens up top we do have the uh, speaker so this I, I do believe this piece back here is actually the speaker fabric so you have speakers behind there and what I do like here is that we have a nice shelf up top for where the uh, gauge cluster sits within. So it doesn't feel like it. It actually feels a little bit better integrated than most uh, big screens like this that I've seen in, in cars like this. I do like the platinum materials that we have here with this aluminum trim, some wood trim here as well. However, in this case, we did lose the physical knobs and buttons for the climate control settings you can see that all of those are located in a static bar down here in the infotainment screen but we have the drive mode knob here volume knob and probably some safety features uh, knobs right or buttons right here expedition in the metal itself a couple of cup holders sliding uh, f uh, storage and i do believe you can slide this entire piece back maybe i misinterpreted that in the article but that sounded like what it was happening with the center armrest now look at the steering wheel here i think it looks very cool it looks super futuristic with this simplistic design there's not a lot of buttons on the steering wheel here it looks like this is some sort of slider button in the mid on each spoke of the sides and it also has this more squared out uh, design to it because when you sit here in the driver's seat where you had here you want to be able to see straight on to the gauge cluster there without having the wheel sticking up and interrupting that view overall a beautiful looking interior um, I actually like this interior even though we have a lot of screens it looks simplistic minimalistic but still has a lot of personality to it which is not an easy thing to do now quickly have a look at the tremor here and this is I think this is such a cool machine specifically with a shorter wheelbase it looks a little 
uh, more agile, if you can call a big expedition agile. But I, I would prefer to have a short wheelbase and the Tremor package. You can see the gold or bronze accents, uh, which is typical for pretty much every single Tremor. We have the same sort of lighting situation that we have on the Platinum. But now we also have light bars integrated in the grill here, which I think is such a cool little feature. Uh, definitely helps with uh, visibility at night. And in addition to that, we have the side view here with the 33 inch all terrain tires. And you can see this little bronze splash of color that is also typical for uh, Tremor trim levels to have that in the wheel Tremor uh, logo right here and the shorter wheelbase. You can see that it doesn't have as, as it doesn't look as huge as the Platinum does right here with this massive wheelbase that we have. This looks a lot more uh, capable off-road with the shorter uh, shorter wheelbase and also the 10.2, I do believe, inch of ground cleaners that you have here. Blacked out tailgate here, and this is a pretty cool feature. Specifically, you have this in white. This black is going to contrast nicely with the rest of the body and create some cool graphics for, for the... Um, uh, Tremor, same sort of lines that we have in the other trim levels. Of course, you're not going to change up the body lines here that we have. Same uh, taillights as well. I like this color and definitely it just switches up the, the entire personality of the car when you have all terrain tires on a big SUV like this. The interior looks very, very similar, but we do have some bronze stitching here for the Tremor to make it feel a little bit more uh, special and the rest of the interior looks pretty much identical to the Platinum. We uh, There are probably some features that you don't have in the uh, Tremor that you get in the Platinum. So overall, I do think this is a very cool design, but I think the big SUVs these days, they're all starting to look very, very much alike. That's I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. They all look pretty good. The, this is probably the best one in the segment right now. I love the front end design with the little DRL uh, light bar that goes underneath the top half of the front end graphics. And I'm looking forward to seeing these out on the streets.